So a couple of years ago, I was lucky enough to be on a trip where we were diving in Cuba. And one of those dives, our dive master decided to take us relatively shallow that day because there was a large group of tarpon fish, which are very cool looking fish, very big fish to check out. But as we got shallower and shallower, the surge became pretty wicked to the point where the entire group was being thrown 20 to 30 feet in one direction. And then as the surge went back out, it threw you 20 to 30 feet in the other direction. Now, typically I don't get motion sick. I'm usually pretty stable in that manner. But even that day, I was starting to get a little nauseous when I was under the water. And one diver in our group, she absolutely lost her lunch that day. In this episode, we're gonna talk about the potential nightmare of vomiting or throwing up during a scuba dive and how to manage that. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Hey guys, welcome back to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle. Well, puking, throwing up, barfing, losing your lunch, up chucking, or in Scotland we call it boking. These are all euphemisms for vomiting. We've all lived through it at some point in our life. It's the most horrible feeling. But what if you had to throw up during a scuba dive? How would you manage that? and what are you gonna do about it? Well, that's the topic that we're gonna to cover today. Well, we're gonna get into the details of how to do that and hopefully safely, uh, and I'm gonna give you a demonstration. I actually took the time to uh, vomit, not really, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that, underwater and give you a demonstration on how to manage that. So some things to consider about the vomit itself. I know, what, what kind of discussion are we having today? Is the vomit smooth and liquid in form? So generally that means you got an empty stomach, maybe you're throwing up a little bile. That is certainly gonna be an easier task to manage. Or if you've eaten very recently and it's a little chunky when it comes back up, well, that's a different matter. And again, you're gonna watch me demonstrate this during a dive to show you how to manage that chunky vomit. Uh, yeah, this is a great topic today, don't you think? And I'm just curious if there's any divers out there. Have you ever thrown up during a dive? Have you witnessed someone else throwing up during a dive? I was down in St. Croix a few weeks ago and had this idea for a video. And so I tried to think about what kind of substance could I use that would simulate vomit? And I came up with oatmeal. Uh, I, I do like oatmeal and I, I apologize if I'm spoiling your appetite for oatmeal, but it has kind of a vomit-like consistency as you chew and eat that. So I made up uh, a couple uh, bags of instant oatmeal. I put them in little Ziploc baggies and we carry those out to the dive site. Uh, I descended down, we were only about 12 feet of water, so I didn't want to go super deep. And then also I kneeled on the bottom during this experiment. Again, there's definitely gonna be some breath holding going on here because I have to take the oatmeal out of the bag, put it in my mouth to simulate the vomiting. And I didn't wanna take any chances that there could be some buoyancy changes that could potentially injure myself during the experiment. And so speaking of which, what are some of the concerns about throwing up while you're diving. Well, it's certainly a very strenuous process. So that can cause a little shortness of breath during that event. Number two, vomiting can literally be incapacitating for a person. Everybody knows that person that can, can vomit quickly and then just keep on trucking. I am not that person. If I'm vomiting, it, it feels like my life is ending and it can be quite literally incapacitating. And during a dive, it, it, it may have a significant effect on your buoyancy and your position in the water. Uh, because you are you know, regurgitating food and pushing hard, you run the risk of losing the regulator out of your mouth. And one of the involuntary things that happens is immediately after vomiting, you are going to quickly inhale. And by losing that regulator from your mouth, you certainly could put yourself at risk of inhaling water. And let's go back to the topic of chunky vomit. Yeah, I know it's pretty disgusting, right? But is your regulator going to handle that and are you going to know what to do if it doesn't? So let's walk you through this step by step. You are pretty sure that you are about to vomit. Well, what are your options at this point? So if you're shallow enough, you could certainly thumb the dive. Hey, get your buddy's attention. Something is wrong. Let's get to the surface. And if you can, if you're shallow enough and you can get to the surface at a safe ascent rate, then that would be probably the best place to be. Get to the surface, make yourself positively buoyant, and you know, get it out of your system, uh, so to speak. But if you're deep enough and you feel like you can't get there at a safe ascent rate, you're gonna have to throw up underwater. So once again, if your buddy is around you, they're paying attention, somehow get their attention, let them know, hey, something is wrong, 
couple of hand signals that I've learned over the years is I'm, I'm going to vomit. So from a closed hand to an open hand coming out of my regulator, not a commonly known hand signal, but you're at least letting them know that something is wrong. So one other area I'd like to address is uh, recently we received word from the uh, PADI organization of a new set of hand signals where a, a diver is able to describe to their buddy that I am sick. And so we're gonna use that something is wrong and we're gonna to point to ourselves and there's gonna be this wide oval in front of the diver. Obviously we use this something is wrong hand signal quite a bit, but generally we're gonna to add to that what is wrong. Do we have an equipment problem? Obviously we see it with a lot of new divers where they have equalization problems. So there's usually gonna be an additional hand signal on top of something is wrong to describe what is wrong. And so I'd be interested in your comments. And as always, let's keep things polite. Let's keep things uh, in a way that we can actually learn from each other rather than being mean or nasty about it. So leave some comments down below. I'd be very interested in your thoughts on this new hand signal and whether you feel it's beneficial or if it's just more confusing. As we vomit, there may be uh, the momentarily closure of our airway. And if we were to rapidly ascend during that, then you certainly run the risk of a lung expansion injury. And so having your, your body there to help stabilize you in the water um, if you're close to a soft or safe bottom, certainly you could descend, get on your knees and stabilize yourself. Or if you can't get your buddy's attention and you're around a you know, stationary object, if there's a rock, certainly something to help stabilize yourself so that your buoyancy is under control while you vomit. Do not take your regulator out of your mouth. First thing you're going to want to do after purging from your stomach is you're going to want to take a deep inhalation. If you don't have your regulator in, then no one wants to inhale water. Stabilize that regulator, hold on to it so that you don't push it or, or spit it out of your mouth. If you have the wherewithal to have that alternate ready on standby, because if you have chunky vomit, we're back to chunky vomit again. If you have chunky vomit that you feel is creating problems for your primary regulator, you always have the option to switching to your alternate. You are going to throw up and you're going to throw up through your regulator. So it's a little different. When we throw up without a regulator in the mouth, it just all comes out in one stream. Your regulator has two exhaust ports, two exhalation exhaust ports, and that's where the vomit is going to come up. You literally purge out into the main chamber of your regulator and you're going to see vomit float out. Your first breath after finishing that initial wave of vomit should be very careful. You may have, again, some chunks in there that are blocking that, and you may wanna consider using your purge valve if you find that you're having difficulty getting that breath. But again, be careful there. Get your tongue up to the roof of your mouth. Don't want to take a piece of uh, stomach contents towards the back of your throat. Or you have the option of removing that primary regulator and switching to your alternate so you can get a nice clean breath. At this point, once you feel like you've, you've purged and really got everything out of your system, and remember sometimes vomit can come in waves, but once you think you're, you're good to go, you want to think about taking out that primary regulator and you know try to clean out that primary regulator underwater. So you can use your purge valve to try and push out any contents that are in there. You know, give it a good shake to really get it clean, and then carefully test that primary regulator again just to make sure it's functioning properly. If it is not, obviously you can continue to dive on your alternate. And at that point, to me. You're, you're done with your dive. If you're having to dive off your alternate regulator and your primary is not functional, from a conservative perspective, I think you're done and you should thumb the dive. One of the pros to vomiting underwater, if you're around it, is it is great fish food. And so it brings in a ton of fish. And we jokes aside, what if you are a full face mask diver? What if you're wearing one of these guys and you felt like vomiting? How do we handle that? So I am a full face mask instructor. We've done a whole series on full face masks. It's a great way to dive, particularly if you're a cold water diver, you can be nice and toasty with your full face mask on. You can have communication systems there so you can talk to your buddies while you're underwater. Uh, but obviously you don't have a regulator in your mouth with a full face mask. And if you were to throw up, it literally would fill up the face mask with vomit. Your face would be covered and breathing would be extra difficult. So. 
here's what we need to do to handle that. If at any point you feel like there is a serious risk that you are about to throw up while wearing a full face mask, step one, and this is something you learn during your certification training is take that full face mask off. Get it off your face, switch to your alternate regulator, and then put on your alternate mask, all of which we should always have on us when we're diving with a full face mask. That way you can then carry out the process that we just described, but you do not want to keep on that full face mask and vomit into it. That would be beyond gross and also dangerous. One last thing that's pretty critical after vomiting through your regulator is maintenance. You do not want to go diving with a regulator that maybe still has chunks of vomit inside of it. Right here, I'm gonna show you a couple of pictures that Mark Lindsay, who is the owner of Sweet Bottom Dive Shop on St. Croix, shared with me of regulators that he has serviced where the diver continues to dive with chunks of who knows what inside of it. Can you imagine how that probably smells or tastes? while you're diving. Probably isn't a bad idea to stop by your local dive shop, have them open that regulator, make sure it's clean inside, and make it all tasty again. And then you don't wanna leave chunks of vomit in there. If you wanna learn more about Everything Scuba's channel, click this link right here. Go check out more of our great content. As always, we thank you for watching. Dive safely, friends.